What's going on Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Min Condition. And today, I'm gonna take an advanced look at the Marvel Art of Star Wars hardcover, so please stay tuned. Okay, now before I get started looking at this, I'd like to say a quick thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending me an advanced copy of the book. And here's a word from our sponsor where you can pick up the book. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Now, this art book, much like the Conan art book, is a hardcover. It retails for $50, just like the Conan art book, and it has about 220 plus pages. So let's take a look at it without the dust jacket. It will be available on October 2nd at comic book shops and places like CheapGraphicNovels.com. So I love when they do things like this. Here is the penciled artwork, and then here's the finished artwork. Love when they do things like that. And here's the back, so let's take a look at it. But before I do, I wanted to give it a quick comparison again to the... Art of Sarah Pacelli right here. So as you can tell, it's a lot thicker. It's a little taller because of the hardback. Cracking it open. We'll take a look at it together. Here's the John Cassidy pencils. I love when they have things like that. Uh, it's written by Jess Harold. It's a collaboration of Disney and Lucasfilm, of course. That makes sense. Uh, let's look over here. Chapter 1, The Marvel Star Wars Legacy. John Cassidy on Star Wars. Okay, so here's the table of contents with all the stuff in there. Here's a Terry Dotson cover. And here is an art piece by Howard Chaikin. And the story behind this particular issue right here of Star Wars. Oh, I love these behind-the-scenes stories, by the way. They're really awesome. That was one of my favorite things about the Conan book, was taking a look at each one of those. Like, this is talking about the early years at Marvel and how they couldn't talk, talk or mention uh, Han Solo on the cover because of the ending of Empire Strikes Back. And when Return of the Jedi came out, they released a statement saying, okay, you can use Han Solo again. Here's the final issue that was published by Marvel. And... Here is chapter two. This is John Cassidy when he did the first six issues of the new Star Wars comics when Marvel got the rights back from Dark Horse. And there's some amazing, gorgeous art in there. Uh, there's a lot of things in here I haven't seen before, even with the Omnis, like just unused pencils. And like I said, one of my favorite things to do is read about the behind the scenes. This is uh, Stuart Eminent's take on Star Wars after he came on the book. That guy's artwork really grew on me because I wasn't the biggest fan when he was doing like Ultimate X-Men. I think he, he did a, a thing on there, but he had been doing comics for a long time. He did the DC's Final Night and I think it was his X-Men stuff, Ultimate X-Men stuff that I wasn't a fan of. But by the time his stuff ended on Ultimate Spider-Man, I, I became a fan. And then Next Wave was just awesome. Here, let's flip a little more through here so not to show everything. And it talks, like, all the artists that have taken over the book have a little blurb as to what they did, what it felt like when they were told they were going to be on the book. The pages are nice and thick, glossy pages, and it really shows the artwork and the colors. A lot of internal artwork, of course. I've always loved that art by Mike Deotaro Jr. And here's Lionel Francis Yu. And even though they all have their unique styles, they still are somehow magically able to make these characters look like the actors, those counterparts. Man, that is such a badass Darth Vader. Jorge Molina, another one of my new favorite artists. They got all the talent, I swear, that they could have on Star Wars. Now, I think it's coming to an end, uh, the series. I'm not sure, and this is Salvador La Roca. 
and I'll talk about him in a minute. Um, but I'm not sure how they're going to continue it, whether it's going to be like Empire Strikes Back. I haven't seen any announcement as of this video. Now, Lodoka is another story. He was a big, like, I was a huge fan of his when he, uh, right around the late 90s, early, early aughts, uh, when he took over Extreme X-Men and things like that. But now he has this almost like a Greg Land photo realistic look to his art or what some people call a light box art right where they're doing tracing on top of real pictures i'm not that big of a fan of that kind of art style but yeah I, he's fast and that's what matters when you have a book like this too and the artwork still looks great i mean it's just me my personal take i miss the old salvador la roca stuff this is terry dotson of course we've seen some of his covers already Mark Brooks, this is on the Han Solo book. Another guy that mainly sticks to covers these days. And you can tell, oh my god, that is beautiful. Phil Noto. So it's got all the different artists that have worked on the comic book, the recent comic book. It doesn't have, it hardly has any of the stuff from the 80s. Here's Alex Maleev's take on Lando. Kind of makes him look like Billy D. Williams, too, in some pictures. Dr. Afra, I'm so glad they kept stuff in here. I'm a big fan of Kev Walker. I remember him doing, uh, what was it, Avengers Academy. And then he went on to do Avengers Arena. He was doing Thunderbolts for a while. His art style really grew on me. Here's Emilio Lizo. Dr. Afra, I hope we get another one of those hardcover collections. So let's look here to the back. Then there's an interview with John Tyler Christopher on all the Star Wars action figure variant covers here in the back. Like I said, I then flipped through every page because I want the people that are getting this to be in for some surprises. But you kind of get the idea of what this book is like. Man, did he do? He did a toy variant for just about every issue, didn't he? Oh my god, I guess he did. As far as the binding of the book, it's sewn binding very much like the Conan book in. There's the eye right there. You probably saw how well it laid over as I was turning the pages. There's none, like no gutter loss at all. So the splash pages, much like this, look absolutely awesome. The only thing I would say that I would have added, I would have loved to have seen some of the original artwork. Like we get a little bit of it here in the very beginning, but I would have loved to have seen more of this, more of uh, Howard Chaikin or Walter Simonson or Tom Palmer. Yeah, just some more of this original classic Star Wars stuff. But maybe, you know, we'll probably get another book sometime. And that was the contents of the book. Let me know in the comments down below if you've enjoyed this artwork from Marvel, the new Star Wars lines. If you're planning on picking up the book, or if you were on the fence about it, I'd love to know those comments down below. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.